This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show, where we talk about your life, your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel as we take you through your questions this hour. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. George, how are you feeling today? I'm doing great, Ken. Welcome back from Orlando. Heard yeah. great things from Montre Leadership Summit. Fun time. Great, great group of people. It was a lot of fun, and uh, the voice is a little uh, little weak. Ooh, a little uh, weak today. Well, you did a lot of speaking. Not only did you speak at Summit, but you interviewed Jay Leno and Nick Saban. That's yeah. got to be some career highlights right there. It was very fun. Uh, couldn't be two different personalities there, right? Like Jay's Mr. Joke, always joking around. Saban. And Nick Saban smiles five times a year. I so, heard he smiled. It was a well, rare moment. I actually have a picture on this phone. I'll show you in the commercial break where he actually is smiling. Incredible. Uh, that's going to be moment. framed in the uh, Coleman household just because it's such a rare occurrence. I love it. Yeah, it was big fun. But we are here for you today, folks. So George and I are going to team up. I'll help you talk through work issues, which are related to your paycheck and income. And George is here to help you with your money issues as well. We always enjoy being together. So there's uh, probably going to be some snark. And uh, Not from me, Ken. I'm on my best behavior today. Oh, really? I don't know. Probably not. I don't think so. All right. Let's get to Josh, who's up in Salt Lake City, Utah. Josh, how can we help? Hi there. And, uh, you know, George, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to take whatever snark you've got for me. Uh-oh. Perfect. Uh, I will Uh-oh. deliver. Be careful what you ask for, Josh. He is a that, – that tongue of his is a weapon. So we'll see we'll how see it what, goes. We'll see what can of worms I've opened. Yes. Um, I'll be brief. In 2020 – I was laid off from my job, um, but they forgot to replace me. So my client started calling me and said, we still need search engine optimization. Do you want to stay on? And and so I said, yeah. So I started my own search engine optimization company, and I've been having a blast. But it's not paying the bills. Um, It's almost paying the bills. Okay, let's stop there for a second. Okay. What are you charging? Is it not uh, anywhere near what the old company was charging, or are you charging the same? I am charging the same, um, but probably not enough, which is your question. Well, no. I'm, so if you're charging what the old company did, so there's at least some type of market there, and those people were saying, hey, this is what we paid for it before, so we're going to keep paying that now, but it's not enough to cover all of your expenses. How much of a difference is it between your old paycheck and what you're paying yourself? Um, well, it's about the same, but uh, but with inflation, I'm, I'm just having a hard time paying the new bills. What they used to, my rent's gone up 30% this year. Mm. George, what do you, do you have think? debt? Sorry, say again. Do you have any debt? No debt. Uh, baby step three, but we're now making negative progress on baby step three. Mm. And you say we? Is this a spouse? Correct. Okay, and they're working outside the home. Yep, she's working part time, and I'm working full time in this business. Okay, you have kids. Uh, not yet, but we'd like to start. Okay. I'm wondering, can she go full time? You live off her income as you get this business off the ground. Or the other option is you go work for someone doing some SEO while building this business up with a client list and contracts and you figure this thing out. Um, yes, I, I think it would be easier to grow the company if instead I did, if, if I like delivered pizzas in the evenings. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm, there's just so much remote work you can do with SEO, and we've got lots of SEO folks here, and people, especially business owners, are willing to pay for help with this because it hurts their brain. Mm. So you're in a great spot to do that remotely. And you night. think that's a better idea than pizza? Well, I think it's a better idea to focus on your business than to get a side hustle if you need the income. And I, yeah, I, my question is, sense. what's have you cut everything that you can cut? This is a sole... Um, uh, outcome of rent going up and groceries and gas? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. I mean, yeah, there's there's a little bit more we could cut from the budget, but it's trimming around the edges. I, I do think it's not. How many clients do problem. you have? I have 21 clients right now. And is it recurring revenue? Yep. Monthly retainer. 
Okay. And you're saying 21 clients with a monthly retainer isn't enough to pay the bills? Correct. That hurts my brain. What okay. are you, uh, yeah, well, how, you, know what? you charging each yeah, client? What's your retainer? Anywhere, the smaller packages are anywhere from $300 a month up to, you know, I've got uh, 2000 2500 a month. What's your, what do you have to cover? What's your, what's your all in budget you got to cover every month? Uh, well, uh, I've, I've got I've got a little bit of overhead in terms of software uh, investments. That's fine. Okay, but I'll three hundred bucks a month times twenty one is sixty three hundred bucks a month. Yeah, tell so me what your all in budget. Is. That's seventy five k a year you should be making from this business with very little expenses. So top line right now is uh, nine grand a month, and of that, I take home about twenty five hundred a month. Where's the other money going? Uh, software is a big expense. Um, it's $6,500 a month? Uh, no, uh, that's about $1,300 a month. Where's the rest of it going? Something's not adding up. A link building, content creation. Um, Are you outsourcing this to other people and paying them? Yep. Oh, you're in the wrong business. Right now. You're not. You can't do it this way, George. He can't yeah. do it. You can't. Twenty. You're paying yourself twenty five hundred bucks a month. So you're month. making thirty grand a year from a business that's making nine, ten grand a month. Here's what I mean by you're in the wrong business, and I should I should probably step back a little bit. What I mean is is that the way you're doing this business is not going to be sustainable for you. You are outsourcing most of the work. That's not a sustainable model. There's no margin there for you. You're outsourcing most of the work of you of the nine thousand you're taking in, sixty five hundred of it's going to other people and other yeah, things. Yeah, what you're charging needs to cover those costs and still give you a uh, great income. And so, if that means raising the retainers to five hundred instead of three hundred, and that's your smallest package, and that allows you to have some margin, that's what I'd be doing. Uh, you don't think the 27 percent margins is is good enough? You're telling me you're broke, so it sounds like it's not enough. It might be good enough for somebody else, but not you right now. That's my point. You can't ask the question that way. It's not a function of, well, the margin. It, it, it margin is 27%. doesn't matter. You're broke. Well, but I guess the question is, do, does my margin percentage need to go up, or do I just need more clients? I think both. I think you need to raise your prices, yeah. get more clients, yeah. and figure out how to outsource this without bleeding yourself dry. Um, what I'm going to do is send you a copy of Dave's business playbook, Entree Leadership. That's going to help walk you through how to do this whole thing completely debt-free with cash, how to lead the teams of the people that you're leading, how to grow this thing in a sustainable way. Because I want you to be a small business owner. We love small business. But right now, this is not fun for you, and I want it to be. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. And one option might be to go, you know what, I'm going to pare this back a little bit, keep it going on the side, and figure out your formulas. Well, he can go work for someone else and, and make 70, 80 else. grand. That's what I'm saying. Go do SEO for somebody else, and then slowly build the side hustle. I like that uh, plan. Until you can figure out your margin, your ratios, and all that, because there's some some more work needs to be done here all right good stuff good question you'll get there thanks for the call this is the ramsey show life is full of firsts and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Campbell. We're here to answer your money questions, your work questions, your relationship questions. It's life, and we're here to help you get the breakthrough that you need. It's one phone call away. It's a free call, by the way, 888 825 
5225. George, one of the phenomenons that we've noticed in the news recently is the seemingly growing category of six-figure earners who are living paycheck to paycheck. Mm, yeah, And I don't sad. think that this is a necessarily a new phenomenon, right? However, it seems to be a growing phenomenon of, okay, I make really good money. I've gotten a raise maybe through the great resignation, them leveling up, and yet they're still living paycheck to paycheck. And what's interesting about it is when I see things reported on it or things on social media, it's as if it's a head scratcher, right? How could this be? Oh, it must be all oh, it's inflation, right? You like gotta everybody's have a excuse now is inflation. It's a great villain to have, but it the is. truth is uh if you have the mindset that inflation is the is the enemy and I can never win because of inflation, right? You're always you're always going to have a villain in your life. So we found you know what this else video. becomes the villain though. Before what? we show this video, is well, my my boss isn't paying me enough. Mm. I'm not getting those uh, 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 inflation adjusted pay bumps. This is a this is a common theme right now. And so to your point, you're always making somebody else the villain. And uh, we've got a video. And uh, I really team, uh, can't wait. I, I saw it. I can't wait for George for you to just break this down. Well, I think our team just scours the internet looking for ways to rile us up these days. Yeah. And they found a video on the internet, so we'll show that video to you and we'll have some commentary. All right, so here it is. It's a TikTok. Let's watch this. So do you feel like no matter how much money you make, you always seem to be living paycheck to paycheck? Well, you might be part of what we call the high earning poor. This is a massive problem right now that affects millions and millions of people that make six figures, sometimes multiple six figures, and they don't understand. Why are they always living paycheck to paycheck? Well, here's the deal. If you have a job and you get a raise, your average annual raise is about 2.8%. The odds are you're actually getting poor year after year and it doesn't feel like it because you're getting these raises, right? But understand this, inflation, modest inflation, is three or four percent. This past year, it was seven percent. And on top of that, your lifestyle tends to creep, what we call lifestyle creep. Your lifestyle increases too as you make more money. So you combine the fact that your lifestyle typically gets more expensive and inflation is eroding the buying power of the dollar faster than your raise. And you could be making a quarter million dollars a year and still feel poor. Well, this guy must be real fun at parties, Ken. Yeah. I got to say. Yeah. I think he travels around with his own cue cards too. Yes. So, yeah. so what do you make is. of this? Is it possible to be a high-earning poor person. I don't buy it. Well, there's a lot of people who make six figures that are broke. Yes, I'll say so that, but that they're not true. poor. No, his def- his, he, was, he was trying to do some wordplay there to yeah. really I've been to Haiti. I've been to Haiti and seen the most Real poverty. impoverished situations that exist on the planet. And I just it, it irks me that, that, that people think they're poor. That's, poor isn't their problem. No, the problem is they are in debt, deeply in debt, have no budget, no financial principles guiding this paycheck that's coming in every month. And so that is the true problem. He's trying to point at inflation and go, it's never going to be enough, guys. They're never going to give you enough raise. And the truth is, I looked into this guy. He's got an online course to teach you how to be successful and do your own, be your own boss kind of thing, which is fine. I'm not mad at him for that. But what he's trying to do is make everyone fearful that they'll never have enough. They'll never make enough to build wealth. To retire with dignity, and that is a hope stealer if I've ever seen one. Yeah, and it's it's and so you gotta so you can't make enough of the man, so you got to do your own thing, and he's the guy to help. Yeah, and I do think that there's some emotional uh, manipulation going on when when we see posts like that, as if there's just. It's just mystical. Well, it feels mystery, good to mystery. wallow in the in the yeah. pain of it's all about inflation yeah. and I'll never get ahead. And yeah. part of the goal of our Building Wealth Live event that you've been a part of is to give people hope that yeah. they can build wealth yeah. in 2022. Yeah. They but, can build wealth regardless of who's in yeah. office. And it's a simple concept, George. I, I'm not going to stay in the money lane very long, but can I hop over into Please, the money lane come for on a moment? Over. Water's uh, warm. I don't know if you saw this, but one of the grocery items that is the that has been hit the hardest by inflation is bacon. Yes. Now, I'm just going to tell you something, folks. I love bacon. My boys love bacon. I got two teenage boys. You ought to see the amount of bacon we go through. One pack, George, is not enough. For this breakfast. is Ron Swanson levels of bacon, Ken. This is a lot of bacon wow. when you got two teenage boys. And so I'm going to tell you something. Uh, guess what? We're not getting as much bacon. Please we've, don't we've, tell me you switched to turkey bacon. We've dialed back on the bacon, George. Oh, okay. You just dialed back. I'm making a simple point. When cost of goods and services go up, you have to decide how much am I going to engage in those goods and services, and I've got to cut back. I don't just have to willingly walk into poverty 
Because it's like, well, bacon's a lot more now, and I still, you know, you don't have to do that. Yes. So on the career side, Ken, uh, you've, you're always encouraging people, hey, if you're upset about your current situation, go find a new job. Yeah. It's a, you can do that. You can go yeah. make more money in yeah. today's economy. Yeah. And on the money side, the truth is, if you really want to raise, do a budget. That's right. You don't have to go beg your boss. You can just go get out of debt. Come on. Stick to a proven plan. Yeah. Start investing, yep. and then you don't have to show up to work stressed yeah. out because you feel like you're not making enough. Because the truth is, we have debt free screamers that make 30 grand and they pay off 16 and they feel freedom yeah. and they're able to live their life. There's also people out there making 200 grand who That's are right. broke because I've they're bleeding never out. Heard a debt free screamer talk about inflation. Not once. No, you know, they, it just doesn't seem to, they're inflation proof. So good stuff there. Yeah. Let's get back to the phones. John joins us in Chicago. John, how can we help? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good. How can we help today? Uh, good, good. So just to give you a little background information, uh, I went to trade. I'm, I just turned 20 this month, and I went to trade school about two years ago. Mm-hmm. I've been an electrician for about a year. I got this new job basically at an industrial plant, and I agreed initially just to work nights, 40 hours, which I'm happy with. But now they moved it to six days a week, and it's been like this for a month. And they said it's until further notice. And last time they did this, about two years ago from what I hear, it lasted about two and a half years. And really, I don't want to do that. I'm almost debt free. But I know if I leave, there's only other two other electricians and they're probably going to make them work six, 12 hour shifts. So okay. I'm going to feel bad if I leave. Okay. I just, it's a weird situation. I get it. And I'm sorry you're in this situation. Um, are you getting paid overtime for this or is it just, I mean, what? Yeah. what they are paying you overtime, but it's mandatory. Yeah. Yeah, it's mandatory. There's no question that. Um, how confident are you in moving um, out of there uh, into another electrician's uh, company or whatever? With just the, I'm assuming the demand is high for what you do. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. So you're pretty confident you could move to another job and not have to work those crazy hours, correct? Pretty much. It's just the only thing is, I, you know, I feel bad I'm going to have to leave. Oh, no, no, no. I know. I know. I'm going to address that in yeah. a second. I'm, I'm, oh, addressing, okay. I'm addressing your possibilities first, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have plenty of options where you can go make good money, maybe not, maybe even a little bit more and not have to work six days a week. True or false? Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. Right, I'd start looking now if you probably, you probably okay. already have. Um, mm-hmm. But this is a pattern that they've done before. And there's nothing that would lead me to believe they won't do this again. Uh, you could certainly bring it up to them and go, hey, how much? I mean, it sounds like you already have. And they just said, this is indefinite, which means don't bother me. It is what it is. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you have leverage. I would use the leverage once you have another situation ready to go and go, I can't keep this up much longer. And let's just find out where they really are. Second thing, you do not need to feel guilty about leaving. It is your life. You are not doing anything unethical. You are not doing anything that is a jerk move by taking care of yourself and doing what is best for you. Is that a true statement or a false statement in your mind? Uh, no, no, that's, that's a true statement. I agree. Well, listen, man, your buddies can leave too. Yeah. If they can't, they can't. Or if they don't believe they can't, then they won't. But the reality is, is you don't stay in an unsavory situation, an unfortunate situation, a soul sucking situation, just because you feel bad for the people that are going to stay on the ship. If the ship is sinking and this is an an emotional ship that is sinking for you, you got to get off the boat. True or false? True. Very true. Then get off the boat and don't look back. Because here's the deal. If you were to stay there just because of these really cool guys that you like, guess what happens? You'll eventually resent them because you're going to make them the reason that you didn't leave. And that's garbage thinking. It's stinking thinking. Stop. Go do what's best for you. Don't move. More of your calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. Thrilled to have you with us as we talk about your life, your money, your work, your relationships, one phone call at a time. Uh, thrilled to have you with us. Uh, George Camel is with me as we take your phone calls. And uh, we're thrilled that uh, you have decided to join us. And, and any time here, if someone's listening in, you've got a question, pops up maybe uh, from one of our other callers, jump in, 888-825-5225. It's 888-825. 825-5225. Let's go to Moorfield, West Virginia. Alex is there. Alex, how can we help? Hi, thank you for taking my call. You bet. So, so I'm 19 years old, and I have more debt than I would really like to have. And I, honestly, it kind of feels like a, a pretty heavy weight, and I just want to know what my steps should be as far as I, some of the things are valuable, and I feel like I can – I can get my way out of this and never get back into this. And so I just, uh, I just, I guess wanted to talk to the people who know best. So Alex, riddle me this. How much debt would you like to have? None. Perfect answer. Never. Okay. That, again, I just need yeah. to know the level before we continue. That helps me. Okay. So 50, <laughs> how much debt do you have total? $58,000. Wow. What kind of debt? Okay, so I have $22,900 debt in a new truck. I have $24,800 debt in a John Deere tractor. And then I have $7,600 debt in some landscaping equipment that I do uh, for a side hustle with my neighbor. We have some equipment together. And then I have a personal loan for $2,700 that is just leftover negative equity from where I've already sold out of a lot of debt. Hmm. Are you in like uh are you in business with this John Deere tractor or is this just a big toy? Okay, well, essentially it's become a big toy because I've been fortunate enough to get a really good job. I work from home in the retirement industry and I love it and I'm kind of getting out of out of these these smaller things because it wasn't really panning out. It wasn't it wasn't bringing in what I was sending out for it. Is the uh, tractor are you upside down on the tractor or is it still worth more than what you owe on it or worth the same? Is. It is worth about the same with plus or minus fifteen hundred dollars, so manageable. Sweet. So, how much do you make? Um, so, with my new job, I make about forty-eight thousand. Uh, as I say, I have some other income coming in from the side hustle that my neighbor and I do landscape and stuff with. It's essentially, lawnmowers, not related to the tractor. Okay. What's the truck worth? The truck is worth a little better than sixty thousand. What? The truck is worth sixty k, and you owe twenty two. Yes, sir. I, it's okay. So I'm very passionate about vehicles. It's a truck that I've saved a lot through my childhood, and a lot through my first working years. And I put a ton of money. To, I knew better than to go into debt. I did it anyways. I put a ton of money down, and I've put everything I've made this year from both jobs on it, trying to knock it out. Because it's like 5.4% interest, and watching that occur every day is killing me. Hey, so Alex, been, Alex, I've, if we want to talk about interest, you're on the wrong show, man. I'm trying to help you become debt-free. That's yeah, what I'm passionate about. Sell it. So here's the deal. The truck is gone today. The tractor is gone today. You're debt-free today. And some, some money left over. Possibly. And some money left over, yeah. which is going to become your emergency fund, because I assume you don't have a lot in savings. 
I do. How much do you have? Uh, about 13000 Okay. Well, you won't have to touch that thirteen. That will become your emergency fund if you do all of these things. Now, the question is, are you willing to sell the truck and the tractor today? To be debt-free? Yes. Are you willing to pay the price? That certainly sounds like what I need to do. Are there other trucks out there? Are there other pieces of metal on wheels that you could love one day? Certainly are. That's what I figured. And can we do it all with cash going forward? And any side hustles we do, we do with cash going forward. Yes. How about the landscaping equipment? Can you sell that? I can. Do you uh, need it? Because it sounds like the side hustle is not panning out versus the 8000 yeah. debt you have on the equipment. Uh, yeah, I can sell it, and I think that, that would be my best bet. It's a good it. move because if you want to keep messing around on the side hustle with the landscaping job, that's fine. But you can rent the equipment, and you build that into your job. You know, renting that equipment is very affordable if that's something you want to continue to do. I would sell all of those things, man. Now you're debt-free. you got a nice emergency fund. You can still buy a decent truck. So what would you suggest then as far as a vehicle? A decent truck with what we can afford. You make 48K, and our rule of thumb is everything with a motor in it doesn't add up to more than half of your annual income, which means everything with a motor in it that you own shouldn't add up to more than $24,000. So right. if I'm you, I'm, if whatever cash you have left over, that's not your emergency fund. Leave that at three to six months of expenses. Outside of that, get a reasonable truck for 15, 20 grand. That's what I'm doing if I'm in your shoes. I understand. Now, the question is, are you going to go back into debt for some other, you know, harebrained idea down the road? No, no, that won't happen. I'm already working on how I want to go about getting out of this debt and saving up to purchase some property up front with cash. And Whoa. So, so I, I like that. That's a different I'm, mindset. You're very ambitious, and I like this. And keep in mind, you can always buy a used tractor if you're just putzing around on the tractor with a cold. I don't even, I don't even think I need it. I think looking at it now, it was just a mistake. Yes, of course. Well, it's all right. You paid a stupid tax, but the truth is you can reverse all of this very easily right yeah. now because of the market and uh, because of them being vehicles and tractors. Oh. So I'm undoing yeah, this thing correct. ASAP, man. And once you, you're out of debt with a pile of cash, never look back. Never touch debt again. At 19, you're going to be unbelievably wealthy if yeah. you do that. Thank you for the call, Alex. You know, i got to tell you something. You may be surprised by this. I've always wanted a John Deere tractor. Really? Yeah. Is it the, what is no it about it? I have no use for it at all. Is it a brand association thing? I, I think the idea of, you know, like, uh, you know, late, late summer evening cutting the lawn, listening to something. Well, no one mentions just kind tractor of moving along. unless it's a John Deere. Then you got it's a John Deere tractor. Otherwise, yeah. you just call it a tractor. Yeah. It was a great country song, I think, by Joe Diffie, John Deere Green, if I'm not mistaken, for country You want to sing fans. it for us, or is that going to get us taken off the air? Um, well, Kelly's singing it behind the glass. It kind of goes oh, like, boy. Uh, maybe I, I need to get the melody in my head, uh, but in John Deere Green on a hot summer night. Uh, something, something, something I can't remember. That's it's all we can do song. legally on air. Thank you, Ken, for that beautiful Oh, melody. see, you were setting me up. See, there's licensing issues. I can't even sing it. I don't know. I just wanted to hear you sing. It makes yeah. me happy. But you know what's interesting about this is, um, George, there's a psychology involved in selling something oh, yeah. that you really like, that's really shiny, and I heard it in his voice. And And there's nothing wrong with Alex. He's just like the rest of us. I want you to address that because in his situation, um, the landscaping equipment, the tractor, and the truck, he can eliminate all of those debts by simply selling them. Boy, that's an easy way out. It's not always that easy. He's lucky in that those still have some value, but there is something psychological. You can't sell your student loan. Sorry, you can't sell a piece of paper. So what's he going to face when he he gets off the phone and he now starts figuring out what's he going to be facing? Uh, Well, first is going to be the emotional decision of letting these pieces go that were a toy that probably a lot of people justify this because they go, well, it's part of the side hustle account. I need this for my job. Yeah. I need a $60,000 truck for my job. I've got to have the tractor because the side hustle is making 400 bucks a month. Right. That's good money. Right. Even though I'm $30,000 in debt on the equipment. So part of it is emotional. The next step is... What are the tactical pieces now? Where can I get the best price? I need to take good photos, clean this up, sell it on a, you know Facebook Marketplace. I don't know where you sell. I'm guessing Facebook Marketplace is the best place for tractors these days. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but those are the pieces that are, is next for him are the tactical once he deals with the emotional. Yeah. But once he does that and those checks clear, whew, there's going to be such freedom. And see, that's the key right there. you got to focus on what's on the other side of this because here's the deal. He's driving a sweet truck. 
just by the sheer cost. The of next that truck thing. he gets is going to feel so oh, awful comparatively. Yeah, it's like the ugly duckling. You know, it just is what but it is. But when you drive crappy cars your whole life and you finally upgrade. My 2013 feels like a Maserati brand new off the lot right now. Oh, yeah. And it's because I drove terrible cars my whole life. What did you just upgrade from? A uh, Honda Civic, 09. 09, a Honda Civic. To a 2013 Tesla. You feel like you're in a spaceship. It's only four years older. Yeah, but Kelly the, te- knows. the technology Can I is... tell them, Kelly? Go ahead. Kelly bought my old car for her son, who is about to take his driving test. George didn't sell you a lemon, did he, Kelly? No, it's a great... It's a Honda, man. The thing will Those go things for will run forever. We had it checked... Checked out and everything, and it's Good. a great car. Sure. Gosh, My son's such a loving it. Guy. I love that. Integrity. All right, so here's the deal, folks. Short-term pain on selling those really fun toys. Long-term gain. But long-term gain. Way to go, George. Great advice. Alex, thank you for the call. You're just a couple transactions away from financial peace. Woo. Do it. Back to the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me in studio. Our question of the day uh, comes from Blinds.com. Blinds.com's 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Make sure that you use the promo code Ramsey to get the best deal. Today's question comes from McKenna in Oregon. My husband and I are in our early 20s. He earns 90K a year and I make 45. I also have a side business in the wedding industry that brings in between 25 and 30 a year. We're debt free, have an emergency fund, and are half, over halfway to saving our 20% home down payment. I hate my job and would love to pursue my own business full time because I know I could make it grow quickly to replace my salary. The problem is that my husband's job doesn't provide health insurance, so we'd have to be self-insured if I quit. To complicate things, we'd like to try for a baby this year, and once we have children, I plan to quit working entirely. Should I quit the job I hate so I can focus on my personal business and lose our insurance, or do I just suck it up so we can save as much as we can and try to juggle both jobs until a baby comes? Wow, George. Now, this question is loaded. A lot going on in here. A lot of layers. Uh... Well, McKenna, I got to tell you, if I read this correctly, um, that once you do have babies, you are going to be a full-time mama, meaning that the business that you're talking about potentially starting is going to go away. Um, I I just wouldn't start a business that I'm going to eventually close down. Um, I, I would work in the job. I know you can't stand your job, and that stinks. So either change jobs, change locations, and keep letting someone else pay you uh, is probably the best route just overall. I don't think there's a wrong decision if you want to hustle. Because here's the thing, George. You know, there's no guarantee that just because we start trying to have a baby that we're going to have a baby. True. And that could be, I hope it's a quick process, but it could be two years, three years. It took Stacy and I seven years. I mean, mm. so we have to plan for the future, act towards the future, but then make decisions that are best for us in the present. Agreed. And... Uh, I think replacing the job she hates is absolutely a must. It's just the issue of, do I start it on my own and we don't have health care? And then our, our costs are increasing when you self-fund health care. And I don't mean to take anything away from her or discourage her, but it does, it's not as easy as it, she makes it sound to just start that business and replace her salary. So a lot of financial risks that could affect the ability to have the baby. So my advice is probably to consider same type of work, making the same money she's making now or more in a place that she doesn't hate or replace the job altogether. Maybe it's the work, maybe it's the location, the, the environment, the culture, maybe it's both. That's what I would do. I would not take on the added stress of starting a business to try to replace your current income and increasing your health care costs. I wouldn't go that direction. Agreed. And the other option is maybe the husband can go find a job making 90 or more that has those benefits. And then she can quit, 
stick to her side hustle, baby comes, and yeah. we're all good. I so like that's that. another option too. Good. Yeah, that's a very good option there, George. Absolutely. I love that. But thank you for the question, McKenna. Russell now joins us in Phoenix, Arizona. Russell, how can we help? Uh, yeah. Uh, how you guys doing? We're having a blast. What's going on with you? Uh, so, uh, quick, um, funny story. Uh, when you were uh, trying to sing in the last segment, I'm actually a voice teacher. <laughs> oh, well, oh. Now, I want to point out that so I, I did. I was like, I wish I was on the phone now. Yeah, but <laughs> no. I didn't try to sing. There was no, there was no attempt at all. I actually held back because I needed to work the melody out in my head. But I do appreciate that you're available in case I decide to do that after the end of your question. Thanks for the disclaimer, Ken. <laughs> yes. Um, no, so the reason I was calling was, um, so I'm just starting my journey on, uh, the baby steps and, uh, cause I've been listening to the show for a few weeks and finally, you know, got on the website and said, you know, it's, it's time to do this. So, um, at this point, um, I'm on baby step one with the emergency fund and I got the, uh, every dollar wrap to start creating my budget, uh, which I've never done before with my, my wife and I, so I can be pretty new, but, um, as I was doing this process, I've been creating, um, gathering all, all of our debts and all that, all of our things, and trying to and just getting ready for the snowball once we get our emergency fund. And the question I have for you guys is um, my car loans. So I've heard, you know, listening to the show, you know, you know, try to sell the cars off, you know, get rid of that if possible. But unfortunately, on my car loans, all of them, I am too far negative to be able to cover the negative is just outright sell them. So my question is on the snowball, usually going smallest and largest. If I know I need to pay an additional eight grand off my car where I can break even, should I move the car up to an $8,000 and said, if I owe 18,000, so I should move it up to an $8,000 in my snowball to pay that off and then sell it to get rid of that debt instead of leaving the 18000 car loan lower on the snowball. Hmm. Based on what you told me, it doesn't sound like that makes the most sense. What are the cars worth? Okay, so um, there's three cars. So the, the smallest one, which I owe 18, the car is worth about 10. Okay. The next one, I owe 32, and it's probably worth about 24. All right. And then the biggest one, I owe 60, and it's probably only worth 50. What's your household income? Uh, take home is right under 100000 a year. What's the gross on that? Probably 130 gross, I don't know. Somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah, you have $110,000 in car loans which is more than you yeah. make in a year. And our rule of thumb is to have all of that add up to no more than half of your annual income. And so we have to get rid of these cars regardless. I'm going to do the lesser of the evils here. Could you sell the 61 for 50 and make up the difference? Because that's the biggest one anyways. I don't have the 10,000. I don't have the negative to cover at this point, no. So we, the only time we tell people it's okay to go get you know, a loan from a credit union or local bank is when they're underwater on a car like this. Now, I don't want you to go rack up another thirty grand in personal loans and just move the debt around, but if we can get rid of these cars and then have a much smaller loan to face, I'm okay with that. That was my thinking as well. I just wanted to kind of confirm um, – if, I, if that should be a good option to go that route. The question is, how are you this far underwater with a car market like we have right now? Uh, bad impulsive decisions on my wife and my uh, decisions. Uh, like the, that newest one, that 60,000 car loan, we ju just got that probably a few months back before I started listening to the Ramsey Show. And in a few months, and it's already so depreciated that much? Brand, huh? It's already depreciated that much in a few months? Well, yeah, well... They marked it up pretty – I didn't realize how much they marked it up, so I wasn't yeah, you feeling got, you enough got on what on they the were deal. doing. Yeah. And why do you guys um, need three cars? Do you have three drivers? We did, no, again, with the three-car thing, uh, bad decision. My wife was impulsive on wanting a third car because she went to put a bunch of miles on her car, and she regrets it now. But, yeah, she got in the idea she could afford a small payment and not put so many miles on her car since she drives so far to work. Uh, so, unfortunately, we have three cars. Okay. What other debt do you people. have? 
Um, you got credit cards. So credit cards probably maybe eleven to twelve grand worth. Um, then student loans, it's about eighteen thousand. And then a solar loan for forty thousand. Oh boy. Okay. I'm going to put you guys through Financial Peace University on us. It's our gift to you. Uh, that's all part of Ramsey Plus, including Every Dollar Premium. You said you just started your first Every Dollar budget. And so what I want you to do is watch the lessons with your wife. Have a conversation after each lesson with takeaways and action plan. Do the Every Dollar Premium budget, which is going to connect to your bank account. This is an emergency situation. This is not like, ah, oh, yeah, we're going to do the debt. This is we don't see – a restaurant. We don't see a drive through This is rice and beans. This is cutting every expense possible. You guys have been living La Vida Loca, and uh, it's time to stop and be adults. So we're rooting for you. I hope this gift helps. So hang on. Austin's going to pick up. We'll get you plugged into that. Yeah, I, all of a sudden, I've got Ricky Martin in my head. Oh, boy. Just, I'm sorry all I can do, do to keep my shoulders still, but, but i got to keep my shoulders Not still. Not with a voice teacher on yeah. the line. George Campbell, thanks, pal, for thanks hanging out. Up. Thanks to our team behind the glass in you, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we talk to you about your life, your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Kemmel. We are Ramsey Personalities, and we are here for you this hour. It is a free phone call to jump in. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. 888-825-5225. How's your energy, George? You, you ready to I'm go? I'm making I got some cold brew under the table. I've been taking some sips off of. Cold brew under the table? Yeah. Coffee. Let me make sure people know, because here's the thing. Yeah, hipster, it Ken. sounded very, very bougie, as the kids oh, like to gosh. say. It's just iced coffee. Yeah. That's I need to try is. some of that on the next break. I tried to, you, you got tried some one time, and uh, you didn't, you weren't a big fan. I'm not a big fan. I like a little cream. It's but, an acquired uh, taste. All right, I'll try. To go with black coffee. Well, we are here. We are fully caffeinated, apparently, ready for you. Let's go to the phones. Chris joins us in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma. Chris, how can we help? Hey, uh, I take good money to hear Ken Sr. Ricky Martin. But uh, my main question <laughs> yes. is... Yes. <laughs> Get in line, yeah. man. Start the Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, I'm on it. Uh, my main question is my wife just changed jobs, um, so she's transferring over a 401k. We're trying to decide what to do with that. Okay. Um, the options are if she keeps it at Nationwide right now, um, it's not taxed because it's a pre-tax 401k, but if she rolls it over to her current one, it's a Roth 401k, and they'll tax it now, but I'm assuming that's not going to be taxed when you retire. So we're wondering what to do with that. Uh, do you guys have a paid-for house? No, we do not. Okay. I would just roll it over to an IRA, a direct rollover to a traditional IRA. That way you won't have any tax implications. It's not worth taking the tax hit right now because that money is better spent helping you guys along the baby steps. So we tell people not to do those transfers to convert that money and take the tax it unless they're in baby step seven with a paid for house. Okay. So you don't so need to transfer it to the new IRA? job. Yeah, you can transfer it to an IRA outside of her work. That's the, that's where she's going to have the most control over it. You're going to have the most options for investing as well. A Smart Investor Pro can do that. You can reach out to one at RamseySolutions.com uh, to get that process done. Easy. Thank you for the call, Chris. All right, Lauren is up next. St. Louis, Missouri. Lauren, how can we help? Hi. Um, so I have a quick question for you. Um, my husband and I are wondering if we should sell our Jeep. We're currently in baby step number two. Okay. How much do you owe on the Jeep? Um, it's We own it. Oh, so good. we own uh, both of our vehicles. We only have 4700 left in debt. And we'll be out of that next month. Oh, oh, yeah. So why would you sell it? 
So um, we can we have opportunity to make. Um, we both work from home, so we only drive my car now. Pretty much, we haven't driven the Jeep in a, about a year. Um, so we can actually make around twelve thousand dollars off of it. More than you um, paid for it. Yes, more than we paid Aha. for it. Wow. Okay. And well. it would move us from baby step two to baby step three B immediately, basically. But we did get an offer that was a few thousand less than what we asked for. So we're wondering, are we just being really impatient? (laughs) I I (laughs) think you are. There's nothing wrong with selling the Jeep, but you don't have to. There's nothing about the situation where I go, oh my gosh, you got to sell the car today. Uh, So if you want to hang on to it, if you like the car, keep the car and you'll get there. You know, it may take another six months to get to baby step three B, I imagine, right? Um, we should be out of, in baby step 3B by August. Okay. So you're going to get out of debt in the next month and then mm-hmm. a month or two later have a fully funded emergency fund? Yes. yes. Wow. What's your income? Um, we make uh, before taxes 147. Mm, about that's fantastic. Well, that's yeah, great news. Yeah. The only question I have, Lauren, just from a practical standpoint, I absolutely understand where you're coming from. It makes a lot of sense on some level because you both work from home. But, you know, to give you an example. My, I, I had a flat tire this morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, screw you in did. the tire. Yeah. Oh, get out in the garage. That. Get out in the garage. The tire's flat. I'm like underneath the car. What in the world? And so sometimes you might need that second car and you guys have got a paid for Jeep. That's the reason to have, you know, something, you know, around. And, and if you sold the Jeep, at least have a $5,000 car that if, if one of your cars had to be in the shop, you could get around. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with selling the Jeep either, but I wouldn't sell it for less than what you think you can get for it, regardless of whether you sell or not. Okay. Yeah, I would be patient to get the profit that you're looking for on it. But again, three months from now, I mean, it's a wash either way. And so I wouldn't sell it out of impatience. I would sell it because you go, hey, 3B is way more important than us having this Jeep. We're okay buying a beater for now. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, I like that. Good job. Love the call, Lauren. You guys are going to be debt-free. Hopefully we get to hear your scream here on the show. Really, really exciting stuff. Let's go to San Bernardino, California. Sarah is there. Sarah, how can we help? Hi. Um, So I have a job question. I have an interview on Tuesday Mm -hmm. for a different position in the same company. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to be professional while asking for a raise into this new position and also kind of, I don't know, guaranteeing or give me some sort of um, acknowledgement that I have licensing that I'm finishing up in the next couple of months that there will be an option for a raise when I actually get that license in the next few months. So what do you know about this position? Does it already come with a raise? Uh, or is it, do you know where it falls in the, you know, as it relates to what you're currently making? Um, so I've had this position before and I left the company, hated the other job and came back. Okay. I took a pay cut when I came back for the new position uh, from what I was making previously in the same position. Uh-huh. Um, it is a travel position, so I know that I'll be working different hours. I know that I'll be driving um, quite a lot, but they pay mileage and stuff like that. So it'll be a raise in a couple of different areas. Uh-huh. But when I was there originally, I was at like 1950, and I pretty much want to say like I don't want to go in into this is such a big change without less than 20. Okay, but you're currently making 1950 or that's what you made previously? That's what I made previously. I'm currently at 1750. Right, but this job is going to pay more is what you basically just told me. Roundabout way. This yes. this new position pays more. So, I wouldn't go in asking for a raise with the job. That that is not going to go over well no matter how sweet and kind and smooth you say it. Uh, you go in and you try to win the job. What I would say in the interview is is that you are very close to completing uh, some additional licensing or certifications and stuff like that. Does that make sense? I would tell them, hey, I am, because uh, I'm assuming that's relevant to this new job, correct? Yes. Yeah, I'd let them know that. But I wouldn't do the old, hey, I really want the job. Here's why I think I'm a good fit, blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, I'm uh, I'm almost done with this additional training and I would like to have a raise once that's done. I don't think that's the right way to go about it. But I do think it makes sense for you to share that you are about ready to complete this training. 
And what I would say in the same sentence is, um, is there a growth plan if you get in this position to where there are measured results that will be agreed upon between me and you, and I can go after that with this new training so that I can continue to grow in my value and responsibility to the company, and of course, win financially as well. It's all a posture, George. Yeah. It's all about how you set that up. That's good. You got a lot of resources about this very issue on your website. That's right. Coleman.com. Ken Coleman.com. Check those out. How to ask for a raise is an article with a lot of other great resources as well. All right. Quick break. And then when we come back, more of your questions. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. Camel joining me here. Uh, boy, when it comes to events, we are back at it, aren't we, George? On the road again. On the As road Lewin again. Nelson said. Yeah, uh, you know, and let's talk about our Building Wealth Live event. Uh, we were just in Orlando, Florida last week. Great Incredible. crowd. 3,000 people yeah, just, fired up. Just to build really, wealth. really fun stuff. Uh, and at this event, we're going to walk you through the steps to build real and lasting wealth. The financial principles we teach at that event are the only principles that do work. We have decades to prove it. The Building Wealth Live Tour has already had two great stops, Vegas and Orlando. And we've got some fall dates, George. I don't even know if you have these on your calendar. They're not there yet. You can get your phone out. Okay. While go. I go, go through these, okay? Just just, just, uh, just uh, get them out. Phoenix, September 13th. Sacramento, November 1st. Minneapolis, November 10th. San Antonio, November 15th. Dave Ramsey, Rachel Cruz, George Campbell, Dr. John Deloney, and I will all be there. Tickets start at $25, or you can get a four-pack of tickets starting at $60. Bring your friends, uh, friends rather, not fins. Uh, friends, go to RamseySolutions.com slash events, RamseySolutions.com slash events. And then uh, how about our Entree Leadership Summit? Just finished that up. That is our premier leadership event for leaders of all levels. If you want to grow in your leadership, Entree Leadership Summit, it'll be May 30th through June 2nd. 2023 in Nashville. I can't even believe I'm talking about 2023. It's the future. Uh, along with Dave Ramsey, myself, Dr. John Deloney, you'll hear from James Clear of the Atomic Habits Phenomena, Willie Robertson of Duck Dynasty. George, that was one of your favorite shows, I wasn't it? I love that show. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, unbelievable how much George loves to binge on Duck Dynasty. Uh, he's got it's a pair a of duck. I've always wanted to live. Yeah, you've got some duck waiters that are taller than you. And the whistle. And the, you have the, you have the <laughs> is it a whistle? I don't know what they call I it. I think it's a duck call. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's not a whistle. Okay. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Oh, yeah. That's more your taste. Uh, Smart Patrick guy. Lencioni, Amy Cuddy, Mark King, and Manit Shohan. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's Network. fantastic from the Food Network. This event is a game changer for leaders. So, uh, RamseySolutions.com slash summit for that one. RamseySolutions.com slash summit. So, there you go. Lots of events. We're Best back. way to figure it out. RamseySolutions.com, hit the old event page, and we just have scores and scores of things for you. So fun stuff. Can't Come wait to be back road. out on the road. Yeah. Let's go to Grand Rapids, uh, Minnesota, actually. Amy is there. Amy, how can we help? Hi. Hi, um, Amy. It's good to, 
How you doing? Are it's you surprised to be, to be with us? <laughs> <laughs> Amy, you're live on the air. The whole show is about you right now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, my question is, my husband and I were through the baby step, and we have about 200000 invested already. But we also have, um, we also own a business, and we're considering... But the question is whether we should sell the business now or not. Um, it has quite a high valuation to it. So if we could get that price, we were considering selling it now, investing the sales from the business, and then we would just cash flow, doing other jobs or something for the next few years, mm-hmm. or whether we should keep the business, work on it for a few years, and then retire in, say, five years or so and sell it at that point. Mm -hmm. What would keep you from selling it today? Let's say that we we got the offer, the valuation matches up. What would keep you from going ahead and moving it versus staying with it for five more years? Is it to make even more five years from now? What's the choice here emotionally for you two? Um, I think it's more of a sense of security if we kept it and the cash flow that we would hopefully get from it. I mean, nobody can predict the economy, but hopefully it would bring the cash flow it has been up to this point. What's the current so cash flow? security in that. Um, well, on paper, about 250000 a year. And in reality, is it different? Well, <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. We invest much of it back into the business, so we're probably taking about one fifty. Okay, so your income is one hundred and fifty. The business revenue is is higher. Have, yeah. Have you officially yeah, started sorry. shopping it? No, we we haven't listed it or anything. We were tra- that's the decision we're trying to make. What's the number? So what's the number you think you're going to sell it for? What would make you guys go? No brainer. We're done. Let's go. What's the number? Uh, no less than one million. It's valued at. Currently at like 1.2, maybe 1.4, depending. Who valued um, it so at that? We, uh, we had a business valuation okay. done um, by a company who's, who sells businesses. What, what sell, business are you down. in? We make a product and then we sell it all online. Okay. Um, do you anticipate having to work in the business as a part of the deal, or do you think you would be able to sell it and be able to walk no attachment? I would want to walk. Got it. Well, you might want to, but you may not get an offering. A lot of times in situations <laughs> like this, certainly when you start a company like this, you are the founders. So I would certainly weigh that. Um, but I don't know that there's any – I think, George, this is a numbers game. Let's say you get 1.25, uh, 1.25 or whatever you said it was, Amy, for it now. You know, waiting five years, how much more does the valuation go up? That's going to be a direct – result of what your revenues are and you yeah. know do you get halfway through two and a half years in going man we're tired we just want to kind of do something else i think it's a numbers game because i don't think it's going to be that much more security george you agree well you're saying amy that the cash flow yearly is the security you're looking for so you're saying if we sold it we wouldn't have an income anymore well we would but we don't think we would make that much like we would both work my husband works full time um, and I would, I would either, we would either buy another smaller business that I could work at, or I'd just get a job. Okay. And you're okay with that. Um, it sounds like you're, you don't really want to continue the business. You're not in love with it. I'm not in love with it, but it, either way, I'm, I'm good with it. I mean, I have plans for it. If I kept it, what would your husband um, do? The biggest- I, I actually have, I want to push back on something if I might, and I might not be able to. How okay. about, what what would your husband do? Give me an example of a job that he or you would do for somebody else if you sold this. Well, he already works full time. He would continue with his job. All right. What is that job? Uh, he works for a supermarket. How much does he make? Uh, boy, he, he makes like $13 an hour. Okay. I just challenge the notion that the two of you in this world with the experience that you have couldn't make close to 125000 and you don't even need that much. But if you sold the business, um, and you, this business is on the side, is that right, from what your husband does? You're the one well, running it? I'm running it, but it's our main source of income. Yeah, no like question. We, we invest my husband. 
Right. We don't when you say you invest, are you investing back into the business or are you saying into the stock market? No, into the stock market. Okay. When do you, how old are you two? I'm 40. He's 44. Okay. So you guys have plenty of life to go. So I'm going to make decisions based on our long-term desired future that we have together. And so if selling the business helps you get there, then I'm all for it. But right now, it doesn't sound like you guys have a clear picture of what's next. And I think um, having that clear yeah, picture I mean, would help you make a decision. Okay. Are, are you both on the same page as you call us today, or is one of you leaning one way and one's leaning the other? We're both going back and forth. We've had much discussion over this. Where, um, when you called so today, to... when you called today, which way were you leaning? Sell or keep? Sell. Which way was he leaning when you called? I think he's leaning towards sell at the moment. <laughs> okay. Well, I think George is right then. I think that I think that you know you've got some real options here. I love that you have the options, but this is where do we want to be five years, ten years, fifteen years down the road? I'd start there. Yeah, do we want to and, retire early? Do we want to be business owners right. long term? And the truth is, if you got a million dollars out of this deal and you invested that money and you made ten percent on that money, that's a hundred grand a year you made on your investment without running a business. Exactly. And then you can work for fun, uh, work for dreams. I think this is a uh, candlelight dinner. Where do we want to be 15, 20 years from now? Now, once we agree on that, what decision do we make primarily around this business based on where we want to be? And I love your options. But don't stress over this. Just get really, really clear and watch what happens. When we get clear, we get amazing confidence on the other side of clarity. This is The Ramsey Show. America, welcome back to The Ramsey Show, where we help you win with your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Campbell. Thrilled to have you with us. If you want to jump in, it's a free call, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Anthony is now on the line in Houston, Texas. Anthony, how can we help? Hey, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing? Oh, we're having a blast. All right. So... I have a couple of questions for you today. Um, first is um, we are very familiar with the Baby Steps program, but we didn't follow it all through our journey. Mm -hmm. So um, we skipped the um, the step two, but um, we we tr we we are in a great position now because we are in debt for like maybe sixty grand, but now we are down to maybe nine thousand. Wow! Great because, job. Yeah, because we did a lot of side hustle and overtime, and um, right now my question is: we have approximately twenty thousand on our savings for our emergency fund, and we still have, I think, nine thousand mm -hmm. in debt combined with our car and one credit card. Okay, what's so, the problem? Should I pay that off? Yes. And use my emergency fund yes. for it? And then, yes, because okay. the baby steps are pretty clear. You understand the baby steps as we lay them out, yes? yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then you, yeah. you've just gotten it out of order. The great news is, is uh, you got the money and you're debt free today. Like you could do it while we're on the phone, man. What are we waiting on? Let's go. Right. Okay. Yeah. And another question that I have is um, right now we are, we are here in Houston and um, we are thinking of moving to California. Um, is it wise to do that? Um, Why are you thinking of, <laughs> boy, I don't want to be snarky right now. I'm trying to suppress the snark because I, I need to know what the real reason is. Why are you thinking about moving to California? Um, I believe that, um, it's just like um like a better spot for our family um we had a uh vacation over there a couple of times and we love the area um we what just specifically like about california and its taxes 
and its draconian policies, and I'm being serious, are better for you and your family than Houston. I mean specifically. Give me three things that make it better other than we had a great vacation. First, my wife and I are in the medical field, and they pay more over there. Right, but everything uh, else costs more, too. That's right. That's right. And um, the the Lake Tahoe, we really love. And the vacation, we have a couple of family members that lives there. And um, we just want to stay close to family. Okay, so so uh, you asked us. Yeah. You asked George and I if that's a good decision. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to see where the numbers make sense. Were you wondering, or do you absolutely believe it's a good decision? Because this is a numbers question. I mean, it, it, to live there and to ask, is it a good decision? You're saying, okay, financially, does this make sense? And it's, it's all about the budget, the increased cost of living. Yes, you're making more money. So which way were you leaning? Um, we are leaning towards moving there. Okay. You got jobs lined up? Not yet. Okay. George? But, yeah. I mean, to Ken's point, I think you have a lot of homework to do to actually figure out, uh-huh. is this life going to be the life we thought it was? Because what I'm worried about is you get out there and you go, hey, we're making more money, but we have less at the end of the month and we're not as happy as we thought. And man, this is tough. So I want you to do your research to actually figure out, okay, if we made 15 grand more with the cost of living increase, does that actually mean any more in our budget every month? Because it may not. I mean, Anthony, Mm. I'm going to square with you. I've got really good friends that have moved from California to Tennessee recently and really Mm -hmm. good friends that are considering it. And we're talking about a massive pay raise for them by moving here and the tax breaks. So I wouldn't do it for the pay raise is what I'm saying. The the pay raise is you've got to run it out like George said. What are our what's our taxable income? What's that going to look like? What what's the tax burden? the cost of living and all those places, um, you got to do your homework and lay it out on the budget, you know, and yeah, look, you called and you were doing the baby steps out of order. Please don't make a move on this just because we had a wonderful time of vacation there. If anything else, I'd go spend another week or two there and really get on the ground and look at housing and really talk to a great real estate pro, maybe from RamseySolutions.com and get an idea of what things are going to look like. You need a lot of information as to whether or not this is a good financial move or not. Okay. Got it. Because I'm, I'm it. with you. Lake Tahoe area is gorgeous. It's fantastic. I'm not against moving anywhere. If you want yeah, to move there, go. it's your prerogative, but just don't do it for the wrong reasons with you know false expectations. I don't want that for you. And on the baby step side... You're going to fully fund that emergency fund. As soon as that debt's paid off today, we're going to build it back up to where you need it to be for three to six months of expenses and begin investing. Thank you, though, for the call, Anthony. Appreciate it. Kara is up next, Sacramento, California. Kara, how can we help? Hi there. Um, My husband and I are considering buying an automotive shop in the small town we live. Um, He is currently the foreman at the shop, Mm -hmm. and our jobs basically would be to both have our full-time jobs be running this shop, and I do administrative and accounting, so I would be doing that side of it. Mm -hmm. And we're just wondering if we should really dig into this and keep looking into options and moving forward. They want 150 k for the business. That doesn't include a building or anything. That's just the employees and a lot of the tools. And Would you be picking up a, a lease on the building, or what would the building cost be? So the lease right now is twenty six hundred a month, uh-huh. and his the current owner's lease is up in about a year. So we'd have to get something solid, you know, to see what our lease would be beyond that year. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. the business worth? So that's one thing I really want to dig into the accounting if we get more serious about it. His yes. kind of loosey goosey. Um, income before he gets paid is 250k a year Mm -hmm. yeah you got to dig in the books and i'm glad you have an accounting background because look bottom line is we're looking at we're looking at gross and we're looking at net okay yep and you understand what valuations are built on correct yes and we definitely if that 150k is um more than three years worth of profit that's definitely not what it's worth and we will definitely will not pay it that's exactly and are you going to do this with cash do you have 150k laying around so we don't have 150k laying around 
he is willing to do payments, kind of like how Dave um, recommends the profit out of the business yeah. for about half of it. We would try to come up with the other half. We have about 8000 extra right now, and we have some like a uh, lawsuit settlements that would hopefully be coming in before mm. then. And we have a couple of toys we can sell to. My guess is, is it's not worth 150 though. So that's the good news. I don't think it's going to be worth 150 once you dig in. Doesn't sound like to me. Okay. Um, maybe it is. Okay. I don't know. Uh, but I, I doubt it. Why uh, are they selling the business? So the owner is retirement age and he just wants to retire. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's a bad idea if the valuation comes through and you go, this is a good yep. buy and they're willing to do the deal and we can pay it over the, you know, through the profit of the business. That's right. And you guys want to be business owners. And it must be also reasonable, Kara, on what your what percentage of the profits you're paying each month. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I, you got to pay you yourself know, I told too. my husband, yeah, we need to pay ourselves and we need to, you know, have some cash in there so we don't end up... Yeah. Not being in, like payroll is that an valuation that Dave uses? Is that still ap- that's correct applicable on absolutely the, um... absolutely okay yeah and, and then if we did get the opportunity to buy the um, building, what would be the guidelines on that? Because I know mortgage is fifteen year twenty five percent of your take home. Well, I think if you so. can afford it as part of the business, um, and that becomes you know the business debt that you work on paying off, it becomes a different situation. Thank you, though, for the call. Eyes wide open. Let's not feel like this is the only way that we can do what we want to do. Don't get sucked in. If it doesn't feel right, trust your gut and walk away. This is The Ramsey Show. show continues. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Campbell this hour. 888-825-5225 is the number to jump in. 888-825-5225. Lori is up in Springfield, Missouri. Lori, how can we help? Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Sure, what's up? I am... So, my parents and my husband and myself, uh, we have 529s for our kiddos. Um, My parents had donated quite a bit of money so um, over the years to it and um, my middle kiddo graduated last year but ended up going into the military so he had about eighteen thousand dollars it wasn't a great big 529 so just about eighteen thousand dollars in his account but this first quarter of the year he's taken about a three thousand dollar hit So his plans are he's going to do four years in the military. He's currently stationed overseas. He's going to do about four years in the military, come back out, go into the reserves, use all of his military benefits to go back to school when he gets home. So my question for you is, as the market plummets, and he's, you know, kind of, we have it in the most conservative form we can, should we continue just to roll with it and keep it there for the next four years and see what happens, or should we pull it, pay the taxes and the fees, which will, may or may not be less than what he's going to lose in the market, um, and wait for him to get home in some other, you know, in a savings account or something like that? I would not do the latter. I would not take the tax hit to take this money out. I would just leave it in there, allow it to continue to grow. You can always change the beneficiary to someone else. I mean, it could be a grandchild. This can be way down the line. Yeah. Uh, you can use the money to pay down student loans. Um, and so there's a lot of options you have. It can be used for anyone in the family. So I would hang on to that. I would not take the tax hit. And there's a lot of things you can use okay. it on for expenses. Uh, even if, you know, I don't know what, does does military, will that cover everything from laptops, housing? Well, <clears throat> Well, it'll give him, yeah, it will give him housing. He'll get a housing stipend. When my husband did it, he got a a check every month that was 
went to pay for, you know, housing costs and those kind of things. Laptop, not so much. Um, he does have, right now, he's he's um, doing a whole lot better than his dad and I did. He's putting about $1,500 a month into his savings account, awesome. like shoving that in. So, That's yeah, fantastic. he's doing a really great job. I'd leave it in there. There's so a he, lot of qualified education expenses you can use it on. You can always change the beneficiary, but it's not worth it to take the tax hit on this. Even if it's like losing money. Just, You're not losing money by leaving it okay. in. Yeah, it's only a loss when it, well, you no. take it out. You got to ride the roller coaster. Gotcha. <clears throat> ride it. Okay. That's yeah, what I, yeah, I would keep it invested. I would not leave it on the cash side. I would leave that money invested. The market's going to come back. That money's going to grow, and it can be used down the line. Yeah. Thank you so much for the call, Jackson, Tennessee. Shannon is up. Shannon, how can we help? Hi. Um, such an honor to talk to both of you. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Um, so. I am in baby step two, and I have recently decided that I think I want to do a career change mm -hmm. and maybe go to a technical school to become a software developer. Okay. And uh, obviously not doing any loans for that. I'm going to cash flow it, but I'm wondering if I should kind of add that into my debt snowball since it will make me more money once I'm done, or if I should wait until I'm debt free. What do you mean by add it to the debt snowball? Just kind of like cash flow that to get it started, and then. Um, but you, you said know, you're, you're cash I'm flowing it, therefore debt. you're not going into debt. Yeah, right. it's just the way she's describing it. So okay. she's working her debt snowball. She wants to know should she cash flow this technical training because it's going to make her a lot more money. How much money is it going to cost you? I'm thinking somewhere between four to eight thousand. Okay. And how much debt do you have? About 13000 mm -hmm. What's your income currently? Uh, right at fifty. Awesome. Would you be able to continue to make progress on, on the debt while cash flowing this uh, technical uh, certification? I think so. My expenses are pretty low, so I'm, I've got quite a bit to work with as far as um, my debt snowball goes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly how it works if I have to pay all of it up front or if it would be like kind of a you know, maybe make a payment of, to get started and make payments as I'm in it. I don't really know. I haven't done that much research yet. Okay. Um, but I don't think that it should put me any farther to, behind than maybe like a month. To cash flow the school? Y yeah. No, yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it will probably not put me behind any more than two months. Okay. Well, my A1 is going to be cash flowing this program if you are for certain that it's going to increase your income on the other side as soon as you're done uh, to spend this four to $8,000. And so if you need to pause the debt snowball temporarily while you get through school debt-free, I'm all for that. Okay. Yep, I would agree. You know, it's just like we have people that stand on this debt-free stage all the time that tell us how much debt they paid off and how many months. And this is while cash flowing other things. So you can move through the debt and cash flow other important things. This is as important as it gets. But do your homework. Do your homework on this uh, to make sure you know what's the what the payment situation looks like. Tell them you're going to pay cash. Maybe they give you a discount for paying cash, even if you're cash flowing and kind of going on a monthly basis. But yeah, go forward. Full steam ahead on this. I love that decision. I love that decision. Uh, let's get to Jasmine, if we can, in Atlanta, Georgia. Jasmine, how can we help? Hi, how are you guys today? We are doing well. How can we help you? Good. I will warn you guys, I'm a little nervous. That's okay. Um, don't you're be gonna scared. Do, you, you sound great already, so go for it. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. So um, I just need help with figuring out what to do next. Um, so my husband and I, we've moved into his parents' house. Uh, with our two children to save money and pay off debt. Uh -huh. um, but now that we've moved in, we realized that it wasn't a good idea. Uh-oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and so we need help figuring out what to do next. Um, we have a car that we'd like to sell, um, but we, you know, after selling it, I think we would only have about 3000 after paying the loan. Um, we have... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Oh, sorry, Before we, I, I want George to get on the money thing real quick. We've got about two and a half minutes, but what's going on with, we've been there a couple of months and we know it's not a good idea now. What's the tension there? Um, it's a little toxic. There's a lot of like yelling and just, mm. um, they have two other, my husband has 
two younger siblings. Um, there's a lot of yelling with them and stuff, and I just don't want my kids to be in that environment. It's a lot stressful for me as well. Does your husband um, so agree with that? Yes, he does agree. Okay. Well, what, what they're doing, he doesn't agree, but he also wants to leave. But the thing is, we don't have anything saved to move out, so we don't really know okay. what to do. What's your income? <laughs> Um, our household income is uh, 106000 So for $106,000, could you not rent somewhere reasonable and keep it at around a quarter of your take-home pay? Uh, well, we have nothing saved, and we are paying them rent as well. Why do you have so, to have something saved? I'm talking about using your future paychecks to pay for rent. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess we could do that. I mean, well, we're looking for places to live, and, you know, they do ask for you know, like first, last, and, you know, security, which we don't have any of that right now. But you could. You so, could within a month, right? I guess that's true, yes. You got to get I out of do it. anything like with my – yeah, we I do. would use the, this toxicity as fuel to stack up as much cash as possible and get out of this thing and, yes, sell the car if it's worth more than the loan. Yeah. You said you'll net $3,000? Yes. What other debt but, do you like, have? We kind of need a car, too. <laughs> oh. um, school loans and just credit cards. Stuff like that. Okay. Well, with the with the profits you have left over, you're going to get a beater car for now. Do you have? Is this the only car you have as a family? Yes. Okay. So I'd stack up some cash. You may not be able to do it for three thousand dollars. So stack up some cash in the meantime. Then your next job is going to be to stack up cash to get out of there and rent somewhere reasonable as you start to pay off this debt. Okay. You can do this, Jasmine. You may have to put up with it for another 30 or 60 days max. But if you get, as okay. George says... Get a pair of noise-canceling noise headphones. That'll help with the yelling. <laughs> That's a good call. Yeah. That's an idea. Get the kids out of the house for a while. I mean, there's a way to avoid this and give yourself enough ramp-up time to be able to move out and move out well. You guys can do this. You're so close. Way to go. Oh, boy. Sounds like we got some monster in laws. Ooh, that's a good I've never heard that one before. It's a great movie. You should watch it with Whitney sometime. Hey, I want to thank George Cannell. Always fun, Thanks, pal. Man. I want to thank our team behind the glass for all they do. We want to thank you, America, because this is your show. It is The Ramsey Show. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. This is the Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we talk about your life. By talking about your money, your work, and your relationships, I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Campbell. This hour, we're taking your calls. It's a free phone call, 888 5225. That's 888-825-5225. You warmed up, George? You I'm ready, ready to go? go? Man. I'm pumped. Yeah. You, you, it's the, Friday and I'm with Ken Coleman. I know. It's a good day. It's a good day. We were just talking during the break. Uh, we, both of our wives are out of town. We may just carry the show uh, to a local uh, pub H or hit something. Hit a happy hour. We might. We might just take this advice to the happy hour. Can we broadcast it live for the people? I don't think Kelly would want to do that. But okay. um, She's not trying to hang out with us. Yes, that doesn't make her happy. That's you fair. see what I'm saying? That's you see fair. what I just did there? We'll find other friends. Other friends. All right, there it is. All right, let's get to the phones. Hunter is up next in Los Angeles, California. Hunter, how can we help? Thanks, guys, for taking my call. How are you doing today? We are having a blast. What's going on? Hey, so I'm getting married in a couple of weeks on June 11th. Hey, and, congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you. We're young. We're 21, so we're excited. Hey, listen, um, I was so, 23 when I got married. You'll figure it out. Young love. You got this. <laughs> so that's great. Um, so basically my question is, uh, I feel like we're kind of set up right now, but I just want to make sure that we're setting ourselves up long term. So I just, we need uh, advice on how to be wise with our finances in the future and how not to screw up what we already have. Well, now tell uncalled. us what you mean by we, you feel like you're already set up. What does that mean? Is there a yeah, trust fund so, involved? Uh, mm. No trust fund, but I think we're doing all right. So 
right now our before tax income is going to be one hundred and fifteen thousand. Nice. Wow. Um, we yeah we both just graduated school, so we're super excited about that too. And you already got jobs lined uh, up. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be a civil engineer, and she'll be an elementary school teacher. And Fantastic. no, and no debt. Uh, no debt. Wow. Well, you are set up nicely. Yeah. So, so what's then, what's um, your question for us then? Yeah. So her parents, my future in laws, are setting us up with a uh, hundred and fifty thousand dollar lump sum. Whoa. And so, yeah. Did so you hit the we jackpot? Make sure we're doing that right. Well, first thing you want to do is think sure. about what gifts you're going to send George and I for the stellar advice yeah, we're about ready to give you. I gotta say, <laughs> man, you're flush with cash. This is awesome. Okay, this do you have great. any money in the bank currently? Yeah, I think our combined savings is somewhere around twelve thousand outside oh. of the lump sum. Spe- okay, spectacular. Great. So you kind of have, I'm guessing, a starter emergency fund, maybe close to fully funded, three to six months of expenses. Uh, yeah. Are you guys renting when you get married? Yeah, so uh, we were looking for apartments right now, so we'll move in once we get married. Awesome. Great. Okay, so you're asking how do you set yourselves up for success? I think you're already a sharp young dude at 21 years old. You already have money. You have this wonderful gift from the in-laws, and so I want you to steward that well. So I would look at what are our next goals as a couple. Sit down together, and maybe it's a nice date night. Maybe on the honeymoon you start dreaming a little bit of what life looks like and go, all right, are we good on cars? Do you guys have decent cars that get you around? Yeah, so that's the one thing we need. Her car's fine, but my car, I got an old beat-up Toyota that needs to be replaced. Mm. Okay, so maybe we upgrade that to something reasonable. Let's not get crazy. Because the rest mm. of the money, I really want you to have that as a down payment on your first home together. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't want you to rush into that. I suggest waiting, rent for a year, get to know each other, get settled into married life, start to look around, work with a real estate agent, and start to go, where do we want to live? How much is it going to be? And when you do that, do a 15-year fixed with as much down as possible and let the payment be no more than a quarter of your take-home pay and then aggressively pay that off. Are you guys planning to stay in Los Angeles? Uh, so we're actually in the central California. Oh, uh, okay. So we're a little bit north of there. Okay. Cool. So you got a good idea what housing looks like out there. Yeah, it's much more. I mean, a house uh, and where we're at, about half what it is in Los Angeles, honestly. Okay, good. good. It sounds like you guys are on the same page financially about your values already. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful thing. Yeah, I think this is great. Well, we'll give you a a wedding gift of one year of Ramsey Plus. Includes Financial Peace University, every dollar premium. Would that be fun for you? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we, we would love that guidance for sure. I think Thank that will you. give you some ideas and some inspiration, some motivation along this journey as you start off your life together. If you watch those videos and start doing an every dollar budget, because what can happen as you're a newlywed couple, you start to go, we, we have jobs now. We can start to have some fun and start to yeah. live our life. Yeah. So I want you to balance your short, short-term goals with the long-term goals. So the long-term goal might be we want to get in a house about mm. three years from now. We're going to keep stacking up cash to have a yeah. great down payment. But we also want to mm. go on vacation when we upgrade the car. Yeah. You know, it's okay to enjoy it too. You yeah. guys have done really well at 21. Great head start. And when did you mm. say the wedding was? The wedding is uh, June 11th. George, what's your calendar look like on I'm June 11th? I'm free. I happen to be free, Ken. Uh, George, <laughs> J- listen, he's going to charge you a little bit, so I would suggest considering some of the 150000 going to George for him to be the wedding singer. He's he's, oh. he's wildly uh, he's wildly entertaining <laughs> Shockingly, uh, with his Ken, little guitar up there, and I do mean it's little. It's not a little guitar. It's a normal-sized guitar. Oh, it just I'm looks just a little littler guy. with you. That hurts. Uh, I, I but apologize. I have been hired before. For I the know. record. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm well, congrats, kidding. Man. I'm really not trying to pawn George off on you, but he's a wonderful, wonderful singer. So Thank there you, you go. For that, hey, Hunter, you guys are off to a great start, man. I this is super this. exciting uh, for, for to hear about a young couple. And can we just... Uh, can we just slow clap for the mom and dad who are in a clap. position to be able to uh, give them a $150,000 head start? I mean, what, what a legacy. How about blessing? Huh? While they're alive, they're leaving a legacy. Wow. Unbelievable. That's incredible. George, are you, 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 can you get in another call in two and a half minutes? Uh, sure. I think Let's you can. Do it. Let's Terry, do it. Terry, you're up in Manchester, New Hampshire. Terry, how can Let's George get to help? it, Terry. Hi, thanks for taking my call. You I have bet. a question. Um, I'm about three years from being able to take my full service retirement um, through my employer um, in a school system. Okay. And I, I reached out for information about um, if I could make additional contributions to boost my pension amount. And they came back to me and said, with only three years left, I could do that. And it would be about $14,000 a year for the next three years that I could add in to what I'm already contributing. Okay. And I'm just wondering if it makes sense to do that or to invest that 14000 somewhere else. 
Well, what is that going to amount to in the payments in the pension? So it would, it would amount to an extra $6,000 a year that I would get in my pension for the rest of my life. 6000 a year? Yeah. Okay. So I do the math and I go, all right, that's forty two that you're putting in. Um, six thousand. So it takes seven years to to ROI on this decision. Okay. Does that feel good to you? I'm not sure. If How it old does. are you? Um, fifty seven. You're fifty seven. Personally, mm-hmm. I don't think it's worth it because I think if you invested forty two thousand dollars, I think that money is going to be much bigger money down the line. Okay. That's why I was calling because I, I don't know how to articulate all that math in my head. So yeah, thank you very what's, much. What's the total pension per month that you're looking at currently? Um, so currently it'd be about forty six thousand, and this would visit to fifty two. Okay, can you live off I'm, that forty six thousand plus per year. plus your retirement? Do you have anything else in retirement? Um, I don't. And one of my ideas is by retiring at sixty is because that could allow me to jump over to the other state nearby and work full time and start on another pension. Oh, ah, okay. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, I just make sure you can live off whatever the pension's going to be and that you feel good about that. That's definitely part of the plan. Thanks for the call. Yeah. Very exciting. By the way, she's fifty seven years young. So point good, that out. good, good pointer. Ken. See there, George. Saved us all. You asked a woman how old she is. I'm sorry. What, what it's part of the job. It's it's still Chivalry still must be applied, George. Fair point. I'm working on him, folks. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming right up. show continues. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me as we take your calls this hour. 888-825-5225. George, the housing market over the last couple of years has obviously been bonkers. Yes, that's one way of saying it. Very unique, right? Home prices that keep going up, up, up. Hungry buyers are and were pouncing on homes as soon as they hit the market. But now there's a bit of a plot twist. The Federal Reserve is up the ante. The federal funds rate have been raised for the first time in three years, and now mortgage rates are going to go up too. And that's got a lot of people out there, including those of you listening and watching today, a little bit worried that higher mortgage rates or maybe even a recession might make buying and selling more difficult. So first of all, let's all take a breath, turn off the news and get some perspective. A whole lot goes into buying and selling a home, not just market conditions and mortgage rates. So anytime you're looking to buy or sell, you got to do homework and team up with a pro who actually knows what they're doing. So if you want more info on how the Fed works, why this interest rate hike happened and what you can do about it, head over to RamseySolutions.com slash rates. That's RamseySolutions.com slash rates. You can also go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent to talk to one of our world-class endorsed local providers. Uh, in that program, these Ramsey trusted real estate agents know how to handle market changes and they'll help you. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. All right, back to the phones we go. 888 5225 William joins us in Columbia, Missouri. William, how can we help? Hey, George. Can wish you all a blessed weekend. Um, recently divorced and as part of the divorce settlement and separation of marital assets, um, we need to figure out what to do with the house. And I gave my ex the option to buy it and give me a payout of equity. Um, she did not do that. And so now I have the option to buy the house and give her a split of the equity. Um, so she doesn't want the house. She does want it. She just didn't refinance it. Mm. Um, I do have some money, you know, the emergency fund and a little bit of cash and everything, but not enough to cover the equity. And so I'm looking at, um, doing a refinance or a HELOC or a something. Um, I don't have any other debt. Um, I've got my cars that I could take out a title loan, but I know all those things are very anti Ramsey. Yeah, the only thing I would suggest in your situation is a cash out refinance. I would not do a HELOC. Okay. So if you refinance the- it, you take the amount you need out of there to pay her, 
and be done with it. Now, would you qualify for that with your income? Uh, I believe so. Um, but even with the increased rates and the loan origination fees and all that, it, it's not a super high value home. And so those fees make a pretty sizable percent of you know what I'd be getting. I mean, can we just let go of the house? Yeah, I'm wondering, can we, we sell, sell it? it? Be done with it? I, well, we could. Um, it's the only house my kids have lived in. That's okay. I've lived in multiple homes. I've lived. I survived it. Let me let me say this, and I hear your heart, William. I hear that. Um, and I don't want to add insult to injury here, but I want to be really honest with you. These kids are going to go through and and are going through more trauma as it relates to the divorce than the issue of the home where they live. It will not, the, the, them moving to another place where they haven't lived is not going to impact them anywhere near as badly as the divorce. And I'm not saying that to make you feel bad. I'm just simply saying that's not something that would hold me up. Uh, It seems like this is the best move financially. If we remove the emotional attachment, is selling the house the best financial move for you right now? Yeah, as an aside, and um, my my, sorry. That's okay. We're here. Take, Take your, your time, time, man. Uh, my oldest has been struggling. Yeah, and. uh Attempted suicide yesterday. Oh, oh my goodness, William! I'm so sorry. What's the situation as it stands right now? Are they in a hospital? Are they with you? What's going uh, on? Yeah, she's in the hospital. Oh. Is this uh, something that she was struggling with prior to the divorce, or is this divorce related? Well, with uh, COVID, the divorce stretched out several years, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it she's been having difficulty since she was 10. Yeah. What's her health situation right now as far as being in the hospital? Is she going to be okay physically after this attempt? Um, yes, there's no permanent damage, but then I, I don't know what the psychological. Yeah. Well, this is going to be, yeah, this is an ongoing battle that um, you're in the midst of. What's the urgency with the house situation? Do you need to make a decision soon? Um, I've got three months. Yeah. Okay. So l- let's, for a moment, you need as much mental capacity and financial flexibility as possible right now. Is that correct? Right. So what was your plan uh, if you were to sell the house, would you just rent an apartment? What what, what would you do? Um, I would like to buy something and, you know, make a home. Yeah, I know you'd like um, to, I, but I, how much do you stand to make? Let's just look at the numbers here for a second because this is important with the yeah the tremendous. It's, really a lot. it's uh, probably around thirty to forty total equity in it. Total. And so, Total, yeah. And how much would you how much would you have to give to your ex wife? Fifteen. So you're gonna walk away with fifteen. Right. Okay. Do you have any money right now in the bank? Um I've got uh two thousand dollars cash. I've got twelve thousand in the bank. Okay. Good. So do you have any debt currently other than the mortgage? Okay. okay, that's great Good. news because Give you, you, some and, you and your room. ex-wife, I, I, I hope, are in some type of alignment that you got to do everything you can to fight for your baby girl, right? Not at all. It is very, very little cooperation in anything. Okay. What's the custody situation? Um, I get the girls for a week. She gets the girls for a week. Okay. So... Here's the deal. Um, we would love to line you up to talk to Dr. John Deloney if that's something you're comfortable with because you're going through a lot of stuff right now and you need as much clarity as possible. So if that's something you want, when we put you on hold in a moment, we'll get you lined up. But here, here's George, here's where I'm at. Um, William, 
I don't want you thinking about buying another place right now. You are debt free. That's the good news in this situation that you have no financial debt as another stressor and an anxiety driver in the midst of this situation you're going through with your daughter, not to mention your own pain and the other children's pain. I wouldn't be thinking about buying anything right now. I would be just socking things away, keeping your head above water in your work to keep bringing in money, save, 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 let the dust settle. The health professionals, the mental health professionals are going to get together on your daughter. And then hopefully there's going to be a path of healing forward for her. And that's going to cost some money. Yeah. William, could you scrape together the 15 to pay her? You almost have it. Um, I, like I said, I could, but that would totally wipe out any emergency fund and everything like that. Well, this I look at this almost as a debt. And so if you can clear this without having to refi and go through, like you mentioned, all the fees, origination, I think it's a cleaner break if you can save up some money in the next few months. And keep the house. And still have a few thousand in the bank. Is that what you're saying, George? Yeah. Keep the house, keep the current house. And keep house. the house for now. And that way, when you do sell it, if you choose to do so down the line, because I think right now the A1 is the health of these children and the safety of these children. The house to me is it's just an asset. We'll f- deal with that later. William, here's the deal. Hang on the line. Uh, Kelly and the team are going to pick you up. We've got some great resources for you. We'll get you connected to Dr. Deloney as well. Uh, if you'd like to talk with him on the air and get some advice on your health, your daughter's health as well, uh, mental health. So Please call us back if we can help in any yeah. other way, man. So sorry you're going through this. So very sorry. Our hearts are broken for you, William. Fight for your family. Fight hard for your precious daughter. This is The Ramsey Show. that play for a second can't beat tom petty george i'm pretty sure our podcast and youtube it's all different music so oh, who knows so what they're I hearing say that see they get you know. bailing me out someone in the booth tell me all right do they all funny. hear the same music no, they wherever don't. they listen they don't sorry it's so different if you want to listen to the radio show and hear the music sometime the yeah. team does a great job. great bumps great bumps you know we can't do that anymore because everybody's got to get their little license they, gotta get a piece of the they pie. can't write a song for the world to enjoy gotta get paid i'm gonna start writing my own music for the show ken custom with you <laughs> get a ukulele and a kazoo. We'll just do our own bumps. <laughs> Kelly said no. Uh, Kelly, right. Kelly's had enough. There will be no ukulele, she said. No ukulele for you. I love a little ukulele. It's very whimsical. I think it's actually fantastic. I think it could work, but hey. I'm okay with the ukulele. It's more the kazoo I have an issue with. And, and you know what? I would agree with that. Fair point. So I could just sit over here and watch you, George, instead of trying to chime in. But we had one caller recently say that they would love to hear me sing some Ricky Martin. I think it was a dark curiosity. Yeah. Well, I don't it, think it was it, a compliment. It will go, it will go unquenched because I'm not singing Ricky Martin ever. Not even like at the house. And that it's is called a blessing. Have. Yeah. So thank you. Fantastic. All right. Atlanta, Georgia is where we go next. Kevin is there. Kevin, how can we help? Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. What's up? Um, so, so yeah, the big problem we're trying to figure out is we are moving in a month. We've been at this house for about two years. We uh, renovated it, and we're about to sell it. Uh, we just finished paying off about 70000 in student loans, so we have wow. no debt. Way to go. We have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been working hard. <laughs> uh, we have about 15000 in savings, um, plus about 50000 in 401k. Um, we'll be making about 120000 profit on this house, and we're wondering what to do with the profit. And so in our heads, we're thinking three options, either rent an apartment, buy a house, and rent it out a year later to buy another house with, or just go ahead and buy a, a long-term home. Um, we just never sold a house before, and we're, we don't know what to do with mm-hmm. this profit. So that's kind cool. of where we're at. Well, you definitely have options. So where are you moving to? 
moving from Atlanta to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. Well, I would rent for now as you get acclimated to the area and figure out what's going on and let the market do its thing, yep. maybe cool off a little bit, and park that money, mm-hmm. that 120000 in a high-yield savings account. High-yield is a hilarious – it's just a term, but it's probably about 1% right now if you're lucky. And I'm okay with that wow. because you said you're planning on probably buying a property in the next year. Right. So we don't want to throw that yep. money in the stock market and it continues to go down and your 120 just turned into 90 and now you need to buy a house. Yes. So that's right. why I'm parking it in a kind of a boring savings account for now as you figure out what your next yeah. steps are. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. I'm curious to know, you said one of the options you mentioned, well, maybe we buy another house and then rent that. I mean, what kind of what kind of prices are we talking about? What are you looking at financially? Because we don't want you to get over leveraged. So, right. About um, our price range is about two to 300000 Okay, good. Cool. Right. So you'd have a nice, healthy down payment. I would only go with a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage and make sure that payment is no more than a quarter of your take-home pay. What's your income? 50000 Is that total That's household 50. income? Um, currently, we're looking into some more options, but that's currently it, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, that's going to be my plan. Park that money. Use it as a down payment on the next house. Are there any upgrades you guys have to do? Do you need to park some of that for moving costs? Um, yeah, probably a little bit. Okay. So do what you need to do there. Make it reasonable. Make sure that we don't touch that emergency fund. Is that 15K basically your emergency fund? You got it. Okay. Make sure to separate that out. I would not leave them in the same account because all of a sudden, you know, all the cookies in the cookie jar start to look the same. So park that money aside only for true emergencies. That means it's urgent, necessary, and unexpected, which means moving is not one of those. Moving is not an emergency. And at buying a house okay. is also not an emergency. Yeah, but and, you're doing right. great, man. That's okay. a good problem to have. Yeah, and I I would second George what you said. I, I think it's really important for people, certainly young couples, that you're moving from one city to another. Take a year, minimum of of rent. I mean, we we don't think renting is a sin around here. It's, people it, think it's throwing money away. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. buying yourself patience, buying yourself some time to make a wise decision. I love that. Get some perspective. You know, get an idea. You're moving to a new city, so from Atlanta to Chattanooga, that's a whole different world. There's enough Let's to acclimate there. to. Yeah, let alone just, the HVAC went out all of a sudden. In exactly. A new place. Don't be itching to you know spend this money for an investment as opposed to going. What's well, the right house, the right location? I mean, because you and I were talking during the break. I mean. I mean, we've both benefited, as have millions of Americans, of these rising home prices. But buying in the right neighborhood, in the right place, is a bigger benefit than other places. And, yeah. and, and you know, it's, it's... We've been getting calls, kind of people, buying sight unseen with no inspection or appraisal. And yeah. all of a sudden, they're in a money pit because it needs a new roof. And the foundation's cracking. And they just got into it out yeah. of impulse. Yeah, it's it's completely absurd. And uh, you, you could make a purchase thinking, oh, it looks good. You don't have all the factors. And then you get yourself trapped. And freedom, meaning I don't have to have a mortgage. I don't have to lock into something. I mean, that's that's a good thing. Yeah. That's that's a really and good people, thing. And people, they get onto us, Ken, for our parameters around housing. We say the only mortgage we're not going to yell at you for is a 15-year fixed rate mortgage with the payment being no more than a quarter of your take-home pay. And people go, that might have worked in the 80s. Ken, Dave, but that doesn't work in today's market. And the truth is, it does work. I did it. It may just mean you need to take more time. You need to save up for two or three more years. All right. Now, this is a key issue. So we were talking about this recently. All the personalities of Dave, we were in a room and we were talking about this. We are in a really extraordinary time where for many people, the housing market is still too hot. Now, we're starting to see... uh, some cracks, if you will, some signs and that it's so the pressure is relieving a little bit, and and housing prices might slow down, but not regress. But you've got people that are listening and watching right now, George, who are they're saying simply put, Georgia, you telling me I got to wait two years, three years, four years? I I can't afford to do the fifteen year. I just can't do it right now. What do you say to those people? Um, I tell them you can't afford to be a homeowner, and that's not me being a jerk. Yeah. That's just me wanting them to win financially because I know we also get calls of people go, we got into the house and we're house poor. We can't achieve any of our goals. We can't save for retirement. We can't send the kids that we can't save for college. We can't go on vacations because we're too tight. 
Mm-hmm. We have no money in savings. We're in this big old mortgage, yeah. and we have no way out. That's right. And I don't want that for him. And so I don't want you to be house poor. And if that means – now, I'm not saying you need to pay cash for your house. I'm not. People go, oh, you want us to wait 20 years to save up? No. I'm saying save up 5, 10, 15, 20% down yeah. on a reasonable house. Have a different picture of what that first home may look like for you, especially right. first, first-time first home buyers. That's right. And then you go, okay – what is it going to take to get there? Well, it means we got to get out of debt. We need an emergency fund. Then we're starting to save up for the down payment. Right. Well, and let's also talk about the factors that can help you accelerate this process. Yes, housing prices are high. Inflation is high. But so are incomes right now. That's right. And so we talk to people all the time. Well, I feel like I'm limited. Why do you feel limited? Well, I want to live in this area. Well, what's more important? Living in this area? Or being able to get that house or to get that job that you want to make the money. So is the job more important? Is the professional advancement more important than the type of house you live in? See, sometimes you have to make choices, folks. And and if you are advancing in your career professionally and it requires that you pay your dues, whatever that looks like, and part of paying your dues is is that I've got to get here in position X for company ABC, whatever, to be able to advance to where I want to be. Listen, folks, five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line, then that means I can't maybe, it's not a good decision to buy a house right now. Yeah. Or maybe I get something that's, or I live further out. Whatever I've got to do to get where I want to go is what we do, not, well, I want the house, plus I want the great job. Well, I want a Lamborghini, George. Can't do I that for really you. I really do. I drove one I like one that. time. And then what sacrifices are you willing to make to get there? That's right. That's right. And, and, and by the way, it's not even willing to make. Right now, I got three teens. I can't make the sacrifices to drive that And you can't afford the bacon to feed them. Yeah, boy, that's... We're the... switching to turkey bacon. Is Sorry, that really Ken. it? It's really a thing. Well, Not I'm, great. I've had turkey bacon. I'm always choosing the pork. Just me. Hey, don't move. Much more important issues still to come. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. So glad that you are with us. Our scripture of the day comes from Job 17, verse 9. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways, and those with clean hands will grow stronger. Our quote of the day comes from Bo Schembechler. Boy, I don't know if somebody just teed this up for me or not. Legendary Michigan coach. Will, were you behind this? No, he can't take credit. Every day you either get better or you get worse. You never stay the same. All right. Nice. Uh, I'm a big Michigan fan. I'm sure there's always some Buckeye out there that gets offended when I say that. There so. wasn't enough money in the Just world for me to know is. who that was, Ken, so I'm yeah. glad you're here. I, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't okay. have been able to pronounce the last name, let alone guess it was a Michigan coach. Fair, but you know how to play a ukulele, so I can't do that. We all have our, so our see, strengths. So see, we all have our roles and our strengths. Uh so I wanted to share a feel-good story, if I might. You know, there's so much. We could of the, use that right now. So, is that right? So much of the news uh, in today's world um, is so negative. It's designed to get your attention. It's designed to get your click, to scare you, to get you to dive in more. And um, I, I shared a story earlier today on the Ken Coleman show about three companies. Uh, two of which you'd know the names easily, the other one you might not. Uh, One is Amazon, of course, and of course they get beat up all the time. Big, bad, evil Amazon. Some people think they're evil, you know, who knows. Um, Walgreens, one of the stalwart, you know, pharmacy type companies in our country. And then Wawa, which is a regional gas station kind of convenience store. Are you a Wawa fan? Yeah, fun to say, fun to visit. Yeah, big in the Northeast, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, the headline, it was from CNBC, but the headline was basically that uh, these three companies in particular are are winning the war on their employment issues. So we've got this big employment gap in the United States that I think everybody's pretty aware of, where we've got more jobs available than people who are unemployed. It's what's driven up, you know, salaries and hourly rates. So these three companies are looking to a group of people 
who have some form of neuro disabilities who are overwhelmingly unemployed. In fact, 85% of people with those issues or challenges are unemployed, George. Wow. And the reason is, and the article points this out, is because it takes some accommodations. Not a lot, but some accommodations for these men and women, some young teenagers, young 20s, to be able to come into your workplace and do a good job. But whether it be warehousing, stocking shelves, whatever, Walgreens specifically has done an incredible job. Uh, so you take kids with autism. So one in 45 male, uh, one in 45 adults is on the autism spectrum, which is pretty fascinating when yeah. you think. It's and, a big and, chunk of people. And I got to tell you, I read this article and I was so fired up in a good way. Because you think, number one, there's an employment gap where these men and women can be given an opportunity to do something valuable, make a living, and and receive the benefit of that, George. And you think of the burden that it is for so many families who may have a family member who struggle with this and the opportunity to get out and be gainfully employed and, and to live a life and they can be effective. And and as I was reading the article, there were, you know, again, several quotes in this, but we're talking one or two accommodations. Walgreens has actually hired a uh, outside firm that coaches these men and women so that they learn the job. That's cool. And they become, and here's what happens. The attrition rate and the, you know, the amount of people who leave in these positions is very, very low. And so retention is higher. Wow. And it, you just think of so many men and women who need a chance. And there is an opportunity here if leaders would just be willing to deal with the uncomfortableness, maybe some, you know, Asperger's syndrome or something. So what? So there's some awkwardness. There's awkwardness all the time. And George, I got to tell you, it really warmed my heart because these men and women deserve the opportunity to contribute to the world and make a living as well. And 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 so Amazon training these these men and women, um, basic accommodations, and a little bit of coaching. I love and to it's hear that. really really working. Now on top of that, the purpose that it gives people sure. to throw themselves into some work that has meaning there that I don't know if that's quantifiable. Well, wow. at a soul level of what it does to go, I'm needed. Yeah. In the world, I have an impact to make. Right. No matter what it is, yeah. I don't care if you're, you know, a surgeon or a Walmart greeter. Yeah. There's immense purpose in yeah. all types of work. Yeah, and so many different types of people who they use the word disability and understand why, but instead of looking at them as disabled, what if we looked at them as differently abled? Ooh. You know, I, I've got a dear friend who, who uh, has two Down syndrome children, and. I don't know if you've ever spent time with someone who has Down syndrome, but they immense are, joy. Th there's no more joy on this side of heaven. And you know, I think if you've got a business where you want a greeter, I'd be hiring those fine folks to greet people because of the joy, the love. They just warm everybody's heart, and and everybody can do something, even if it's the most menial of tasks. Well, a lot of people don't want to do menial tasks, or if they take the job doing the menial task, they quickly want to be promoted. But these men and women who have some neuro challenges and things of that nature, they can absolutely be fulfilled. I mean, like, joyous stocking the shelves. And, and so there is an opportunity. So I just wanted to tell you, we hear a lot of negative news about big companies like Amazon or Walgreens or whatever, but these companies are seeing an opportunity. And I think that this is available for small businesses as well to say, Hey, oh, yeah. I'm having a hard time getting people in. Hey, you're a restaurant and you're having a hard time staffing, uh, a host or hostess. That's where I'm going. Somebody with a smile who can greet somebody and lead them to a table. Wow. Well, Ken, I saw another article this morning, and it was very, of course, fear-mongering, and it was the job market's very, everyone's very pessimistic about the job market. It went on to say, well, there's actually two jobs for every one American, oh, but yeah. people are very pessimistic about the job market. It's ridiculous. What, what's at the heart of all of this? Yeah. Are people just not satisfied in their work? Well, you, you mean all the job hopping? Everything. Well, it's just the pessimism around work. Well, there's here's, a lot of okay. pessimism around work in general. Yeah, well, the, so there's two schools of thought. One, business leaders, business owners, they don't like this big gap because it's driving up salaries and hourly rates. So when you, it's a supply demand issue. So when the supply of jobs is very wide, the gap between how many people are employed, that drives up costs. 
in the form of salaries. You ready for this? The Fed. The Fed. Our friends over at the Fed. Are they our friends? I don't think so. It was uh, tongue-in-cheek. They're trying to convince the biggest corporations in America to go on a voluntary hiring freeze. The reason? Yes. That's how I reacted. Why? I'm confused by that. Because they think it's going to help with inflation. So people are leaving jobs. You've heard this, the great yes. resignation. We've had nearly 40 million people leave jobs. But wouldn't more workers stimulate the economy? Yes, but the, these morons at the Fed think that if we do a temporary hiring freeze, first of all, who, who do they think they are to tell private they companies whether they can hire? Hiring? No, of course they can't, but they're asking okay. nicely. <laughs> but th- that is so absurd and nonsensical because they're going, well, that's going to help stem the tide of inflation because one of the major drivers of inflation, let's make no mistake about it, is in fact – the increase in salaries. Because if I've got to pay a kid at Taco Bell $3 more an hour, well, trust me, you're going to see that in your Chalupa. I never thought I'd hear that sentence today. It's a brand new one for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, we were just at a local restaurant last night, and there were there was a 45-minute wait. And I looked around. There's empty tables everywhere. And I'm no going, wait I don't, I'm confused. They had about three people running the whole show. Right. And so there is a severe labor shortage and uh, a lot of work to be done. And I, I think it, some of it stems from people going, well, I don't want to do that. And I'm going to find something else to do. I'm going to find another And that's their right, work. by the way. I mean, you know, I, look, you can have different schools of thought on this, but a sign of a healthy capitalistic economy, there's always going to be a bit of a gap. It shouldn't be as big as it is now. But yeah. you're always – in a healthy economy, you're going to have more jobs available than people – you want low unemployment. True. So anyway, all that to say um, – You know what warm my heart, Ken, though, about all that? There was a server there, and she said, hey, are you – do you – are you the guy? And I went, yeah. And she said, I just finished the high school curriculum in personal finance. Come on. She's a junior. Come on. Crushing it. And she called me sir. And I went, wow, that is the kind of respect I've been needing around here. Yeah. Well, so, mad respect. You, so she finally called you sir, and that makes you happy. Yeah. For, whereas I don't want to be called sir. So. There you anyway. go. I'm still young enough. Yes, yeah, sure. It warms my heart. Gave you a little more stature. Yes. No pun intended. Hey, George Campbell. Fun stuff today. I want to thank Kelly and the entire team behind the glass. And you, America, this is The Ramsey Show. Hey, folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts.